Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I gotta say, you know, it is not looking great out there, and I can tell the sentiment is uh, is reflecting that. You guys can see now, we have just been dipping. Uh, yesterday we were in the 30s for fear and greed, and now the crypto space is at 26 for fear. So we are very, very low now on the meter. That uh, feeling of euphoria has just been sucked out of the crypto community. Uh, you guys can see within the last 24 hours, some of the major cryptocurrencies are down as well, like Bitcoin, that is down 3.45%. Ethereum is down 4.15, uh, and some of the other major ones too, like BNB coin down about uh, two and a half. Uh, Solana is down 3.2. XRP is down 2.2 percent. So, what gives, guys? Are we going to get out of this? Crypto market has slipped significantly below two trillion dollars. That is down another uh, 2.41 percent in the last 24 hours. Volume is up because we are seeing a sell-off. But guys, Bitcoin, it's looking as though Bitcoin is actually selling off more than the altcoins. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is at 55.8%. You guys can see Bitcoin here on the, I've got it here on the weekly, because I wanted to show you guys something that, uh, you know, might quell your fears a little bit, hopefully. So this is the weekly chart pattern. And in the past, we've talked about the post having, uh, how many days it takes post having to get above all time high. We know that the, uh, the ETFs really kind of influence Bitcoin's price move during this uh, particular bull run. And so now we're just kind of languishing here and it feels like we've just been languishing for about six months. And, uh, you know, because it's been such a long time, a lot of people are wondering, okay, is this it? Is this, you know, the top of the market? Are we just turning bearish? What other possibilities are there for Bitcoin? So I just wanted to show you guys something that I uh, noticed here. If I take the former all-time high, okay, from back in November of 2021, and I bring it to uh, into, to the point where it basically retraced in and around 854 days later. You guys can see that up there. And if I were to take the uh, the former bull run, okay, so the top back in December of 2017, and bring that over to about uh, 850 some odd days, 854 days, where does that bring us, guys? Check this out over here. Okay, that brings us right down in and around here. And uh, so this is the exact same time frame. And if I were to put a, uh, a price range tool on that, so if I were to take the high and bring it down here, guys, in the last cycle, we were still down 65% after 841 days. So you consider that, okay? And uh, now it's been actually longer than 854 days. And uh, at 854, we were back up uh, retracing to all time high. So let me just take that number here. Okay, I wanted to take the same measurement here and bring it down to where we are today. So further on in the cycling, guys, we are only down 21%. So uh, I know, you know, it does feel like, uh, you know, it's never going to happen, like the euphoria phase is never going to happen, but take a look what happened after the 854 days. We pretty much pumped for the next year, guys. And so I have no doubt that we are going to see the same thing during this bull run. I'm taking a look at all these different metrics for the Patreon subscribers, guys. You can find out what I'm doing at patreon.com slash working money channel. If you are interested in following my crypto trading journey, there's a lot of interesting factors involved in this crypto bull run. And so, uh, you know, seeing fear at 26, this is just gauging, uh, you know, what the sentiment is currently. Of course, there's a macro market situation that we have to be paying attention to as well. This from ITM Trading from the Daniela Cambone show interviewing Robert Kiyosaki, he thinks the market is currently in free fall. What does this mean for cryptocurrencies? Well, listen to this. I mean, do you have any feeling as to when the timing, when it could hit, Robert? I mean, you saw what happened the first week of August, right? We had the crash. We had a crash. And then everything kind of went away in the span of 48 hours or less than 48 hours. I mean, was that just a, a prelude of things to come? I mean, what's going what's gonna to bring down the system? Well, again, what, what Records is saying here is really accurate. You know, he's just, he says you can't see it. That's the problem. And the biggest markets in the world are the bond markets. And you have every, ask any financial planner, oh, should I buy bonds? Yes, they're safe. And the whole thing is coming down because it's all corrupt. And so that's why for all these years, it's gold and silver. I own gold mines, silver mines, all that stuff. Robert, it could happen overnight is what you're saying. It's happening. The crash has already started. As Record says, we entered a depression in 2008. And that, again, you know, he's a smart boy. Definition of a, defini of a depression is subprime growth. So America and the world has not grown 
you know, like he talks about here, how Credit Suisse went bankrupt. Nobody says anything. So call the safest bank in the world, Credit Suisse is bankrupt, but we can't see it. And so what's happening is that it starts, keeps crashing, but we can't see it. And that's why all these years is gold, silver, and I had Bitcoin to it. I'm a big silver bull, as you know, I own silver mines. I started, uh, you know, we have a mine in uh, Utah, the biggest, the richest gold mine in America today. So I'm a hardcore believer of gold and silver, real money, not fake money. And notice how he put Bitcoin on that list too. So cryptocurrencies as well. And, uh, you know, you do have to be careful which cryptocurrencies you are purchasing, uh, you know, because it's at the end of the day, it's only going to be a handful that do stick around. So thought that was interesting, guys. I also saw this uh, perhaps lending to the uh, negative sentiment for the crypto market. Van Eck will close and liquidate its Ethereum future ETFs. Many different news outlets were uh, reporting on this. Uh, and so this is from Cointelegraph. Asset manager Van Eck is shuttering its future-based Ether exchange traded funds, citing insufficient demand as spot cryptocurrencies ETF dominate inflows, according to a September 6th announcement. Now, this wasn't... Um, I, I don't think this was presented in uh, in such a forthright way. Even uh, the X platform did say that they uh, that they wanted to add some context to this. That this was misleading. They are replacing the ETFs that invested in Ethereum futures with the recently approved spot ETP. So on the surface, it uh, certainly does sound negative. Van Eck to shutter e uh, Ethereum futures ETFs. But really, they are just replacing it with another spot traded product. Some people in the comments here noticing that. So uh, just futures, not spot, says Zork. Future talk here saying bad news equals bottom indicator. Closing futures for spot ETPs. Uh, some people not getting it, saying so it's over now. No, it is not over. It is not over. Uh, you know, cryptocurrencies are still going to do well. Again, remember, guys, we are only 21% down from that high. Uh, and 854 days uh, in the last cycle, we were 65% down. So just think of this euphoria phase. Think of how exciting this could be, right? If we're taking a look at Bitcoin, if it does go up another 931% from here, where would that take us, guys? Let's just do a little experiment here. 931%. Uh, well, I don't think it's going to go that high. That is uh, extreme. It would be nice, though. $559,000 per BTC. I am not predicting that, though. Uh, this one from Draco Magnus and uh, just a bit of a public service announcement here. This is a warning of an active scam, guys, if you are involved with the uh, the Songbird or Flare token. Uh, some people and projects will be identified in this thread, so everyone knows what is happening with evidence. Apparently, there is a, a scam project called Flare Bank, and it's trying to associate itself with the Flare Networks. Uh, apparently, this is a scam, so uh, just be careful, guys. He does give some more detail down in here. I'm not going to go over it in uh, in full detail on the channel, but I will link this in the description of the video for you guys. Just remember Flare Bank, the website apparently is uh, flrbank.com. Uh, just be mindful because, uh, you know, there are a lot of cryptocurrency scams out there. I always suggest to keep uh, your cryptocurrency safe in cold storage. I do have an affiliate link in the description of the video if you guys are looking for an option. I do personally use the Ledger Nano. I know other people have uh, different preferences, but I do use the Ledger Nano. I love the Ledger. This is going to be the time where, uh, you know, uh, people are going to be actively trying to scam you out of your cryptocurrency. So uh, again, just be mindful of that. Gonna keep moving along because I wanted to reiterate this. Anders here uh, reminding us that he posted this back in April of 2023. A reminder why ISO 20022 is important for Ripple and why it's way bigger than you think. Again, this is coming from a former Ripple employee. So this is not just random ideas here. Bob Way tells us why ISO 20022 migration for cross-border payments is such a big deal for Ripple. And uh, the reason I'm mentioning this again, I know I've mentioned this on this channel in the past, is because it does tie into what I'm going to talk about uh, in a bit. So Bob Way here basically saying, you know, ISO 20022 is way bigger than you might think at first. It does replace the previous SWIFT standards, MT and MX, and adds a lot of other things. Uh, he does go on to say the reason the ISO 20022 transition is extremely helpful to Ripple Bank sales team is that it means that every bank is required to implement the new technology. So it kind of almost forces the banks to do this. Uh, and so, you know, it, it was in the past that it was uh, it was about what is, uh, you know, the budget for the bank. The person you are negotiating uh, with only needs to have a product budget and then they're good to go. Money for development has already been allocated elsewhere. Nobody gets fired for following a mandate. 
That makes a sale so much easier for Ripple and uh, the Ripple sales team. These were tweets from back in late 2022. Um, Bob Way also says, but even if banks wait for a settlement, their 2022 upgraded system becomes much easier for Ripple to integrate with. The biggest impact is going to be that even smaller banks are going to be upgrading their systems. That creates a much larger pool for ODL compatible banks. Guys, the entire world has to be integrated. This is uh, you know, a global mandate that we're going to talk about a little bit more in a second. We can also see other companies, other types of financial payment companies integrating with strategic partners. Guys, I just happened to see this. This is the most recent one. MasterCard has teamed up with Saudi fintech Bark for digital payment services. So Bark will leverage MasterCard's gateway technology to provide fast, secure payments. Earlier, Bark did also partner with TerraPay. So we know Bark is also connected to TerraPay, which is a Ripple partner. But guys, not only that, uh, this was only from two months ago. Thunes, which is another confirmed Ripple partner, also did partner with Bark. So Bark is connected to Ripple through two separate partners. It's almost like a uh, double tertiary partner here. Uh, and they partner to revolutionize inter uh, international money transfers. Bark is a highly innovative digital wallet and financial services app born in Saudi Arabia. With Thunes' help, Bark Mark's customers can send money efficiently and rapidly in 4 billion bank accounts and 3 billion wallets in 130 plus countries. So Bark already has that connection. And now, guys, they are teaming up with MasterCard. This agreement will allow Bark to offer a range of payment acceptance solutions through past, uh, MasterCard Gateway. The partnership aims to provide merchants and customers in Saudi Arabia with access to various services that cater to their specific needs. Bark plans to use MasterCard Gateway technology to enhance its service offerings. The partnership is expected to improve convenience, speed, and security for customers. This includes advanced payment processing and fraud pre uh, fraud prevention features that will be integrated into Bark's platform. And here's a quote, guys. This represents an exciting point in history, both for the kingdom and the wider financial services industry, says Bark's executive and founder. At a time when Saudi businesses, uh, citizens, and residents are increasingly looking for ways to send money across the globe quickly and securely, we have partnered with MasterCard to deliver the modern offerings that customers demand. And so, uh, you know, it is no surprise that we are seeing more integrations like this. And now with multiple Ripple partners like MasterCard, TerraPay and Thunes, now we have Bark integrating uh, in this system. So that is some great news. I know, guys, we have been getting uh, a lot of pushback, especially in the XRP community with regards to this. I happened to see this yesterday and I thought, you know, I take the time to uh, kind of gauge the, uh, I guess, XRP community sentiment surrounding this. This just in, Ripple co-founder and executive chairman Chris Larson has now endorsed Kamala Harris for president. And I know a lot of you guys are probably disappointed about this, but guys, you know what? Maybe it's not all that bad. Um, I mean, if we're at the end of the day, if we're looking at, uh, you know, how our XRP is going to perform, right? I mean, right now we're still trading in a spec market. We are trading in and around 52.8 per XRP. So nothing special there. However, it has now been stated officially. Larson was one of 88 corporate executives across the country to endorse Harris in a new letter. The move is a departure from the many digital asset leaders who have voiced support for Republican candidate Donald Trump. That decision is largely connected to Trump's embrace and advocacy of the crypto asset class. To this point, the Harris campaign has been quiet on digital currencies and their place in her administration. So um, why does it seem that Chris Larson is going against the grain and, uh, you know, um, putting his support behind a candidate who is likely not very cryptocurrency friendly? But let's give some context. I mean, let's be uh, let's be fair here. It's very easy to look at this post and think negatively about Ripple and or XRP, which is ridiculous. But don't forget what was happening under Trump's administration. Remember when Donald Trump was president the first time? This coming from Nick Crypto Crusader here. Um, and, I, you know, just for a counterpoint here to play devil's advocate, I'm going to read you guys this. I really don't care about politics. Uh, the point here is clear. We have an agency masquerading as a savior for the retail sector. They have squeezed this industry for years and continue to drain capital and liquidity from it at every source. Guys, the SEC brought 56 cases against cryptocurrency related firms during Jay Clayton's tenure. And uh, you remember who put Jay Clayton in? President-elect Donald Trump announced his intention to nominate Jay Clayton to be the SEC chairman back in 2017. So, uh, you know, to put all things in context... I don't know. I, you know, at that time, it was a very, very different time. I, I feel like there should be less excuse for this now. So why is Chris Larson doing this? 
Tony Edward here also commenting, LOL, this is going to create so much drama on crypto Twitter and a whole lot of fighting in the XRP community. Uh, Warcraft Virgin here saying, yeah, it's simple. 99% of crypto needs to go to zero. We're going to need a war on crypto for that to happen. Utility survives. XRP has clarity and will take number one spot and has a head start. Uh, Tony is LOLing at that chip here saying, why is there a person alive that doesn't know Chris Larson leans left? Who doesn't know that? So that is another very interesting point here, and I think a very important point to make. Guys, Ripple has been, and I know I've talked about this several times on this channel, Ripple has been a partner of the World Economic Forum for a very long time. And if you've seen videos I've done on the WEF and Klaus Schwab, etc., you know where I'm going with this. Brad Garlinghouse has also made appearances at Davos uh, at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting. So that is, uh, you know, it's, it's very apparent. Chris Larson also himself a member of the World Economic Forum. So, you know, when we are seeing, uh, you know, these types of candidates running against Donald Trump, is it any surprise? Is it any surprise? I mean, um, I'm not surprised, but that's because for Chris Larson and everybody over there at Ripple, this is a bit of a different game. For a lot of the other cryptocurrency advocates, they are advocating for a fair uh, playing field, you know, level playing field in the United States so that cryptocurrency can develop at a great pace. But guys, many people do think already that Ripple does have it in the bag, that they're already the chosen ones. And, you know, this is, you know, this kind of does point to that fact. You know, if Chris Larson is clearly advocating for a crypto candidate that uh, we know has been negative on crypto in the past, we know the former Biden administration was no good. We know Gary Gensler is no good. Why the heck would he do this? So going back to that concept of ISO 20022 and how that's really going to get XRP utility up and running uh, and connecting that to the World Economic Forum, I just wanted to bring you guys this, a paper from November of 2021, Digital Currency Governance Consortium White Paper Series. Okay, and if we uh, just take a look down here, guys, I want to bring this to your attention. Tech interoperability and coordination over cross-border and multilateral CBDC arrangements. Okay, so, you know, when Bob Way, a former employee at Ripple, was saying that ISO 20022 is going to be good for Ripple, here's where this ties in. Multilateral policy and technical coordination will be critical to ensuring cross-border CBDC interoperability, including as it relates to regulatory requirements, risk control measures and data, and other standards. Existing standards, such as the ISO 20022, can be leveraged. And guys, if you remember, who was the first company that was going to onboard onto ISO 20022. It was Ripple right out of the gate. Messaging standards, okay? Messaging standards that are compatible with ISO 20022 will be implemented for integration with existing payment systems for CBDCs and stablecoins. Entrenched as a common business language for the financial marketplace, ISO 20022 is firmly positioned as an element of coalescence for new and contrasting fintech innovations such as DLT, smart contracts, and APIs. For example, the ISO 20022 standard is widely used in payments automation uh, in the RTGS and trade finance. So, you know, this is the standard that, uh, you know, these guys are choosing to go with here. Again, guys, this is directly from the World Economic Forum's, uh, from, from their document here, the Digital Currency Governance Consortium White Paper Series. So, I mean, Chris Larson, part of the World Economic Forum, is it any surprise that he's endorsing, uh, you know, this type of political candidate here? And, you know, maybe we're conflating the two. You know, maybe it doesn't really matter what happens in the United States for Ripple to thrive, considering Ripple is already ubiquitous around the world in a lot of ways. The other thing I wanted to mention was this, uh, xrp wins posting this, okay? Kamala Harris, donors privately urged the final Firing of FTC's con and the SEC's Gary Gensler. So here's another point that I just wanted to make uh, to you guys. The fact that even though um, we are seeing, uh, you know, uh, guys like Chris Larson endorse Kamala Harris, the uh, Democrats are very, very unhappy with Gary Gensler. So that might also be a sign of where, you know, they are looking to, um, I guess, head towards cryptocurrency regulation. Uh, down here, this article does say, and I'm just cutting in the middle here, but I will link it in the description if you guys want to read the full thing. Meanwhile, Gensler, whose term as head of the Security and Exchange Commission is up in 2026, is disliked privately by both Democratic and Republican donors, some of the people said. Gensler has pushed for tougher regulations, but donors have particularly bristled at, uh, at what they perceive as him talking down to Wall Street the people said. Billionaire Mark Cuban, a supporter of Harris, told CNBC this week that the SEC needs to change and that he's asked the vice president's team to put my name in for the SEC. Donald Trump pledged at a crypto conference that if he were elected, he would fire Gary Gensler. So um, despite what people think, 
uh, even though he was put in at a time, a very different time, we got to remember, uh, when Biden, uh, you know, was first in. Guys, it's very, very different now than it was back in 2017, 2018. Uh, in 2020, even times have changed quite a bit. And now the Democrats and Republicans are very anti Gary Gensler. So when we look at the crypto sentiment being fear in the space, we have to remember to ourselves, guys, smart contracts on the XRPL. Remember that news from the other day and the Chris Larson endorsing Kamala Harris news. Those are two stories that completely expose the emotional state of the crypto community. I don't have long commentary on either subject, but neither dictates anything significant in the long run. So just remember, guys, we are still in a bull run. This is all really just noise before we make our way to the top. And, uh, you know, even just bringing up that Bitcoin chart again. Remember, we are only 21 percent off those same numbers. If we were to extrapolate to the bull run previous, where at this point in time, we were down 65 percent. So sentiment was low at that point as well. Just remember, in this coming from Smoke, he says, I assess, I research, I learn, I improve and visualize what the masses are missing and guys, that could be the bigger picture, the real outlook, the underlying meanings. Uh, that's where my focus goes. And when the herd moves in one direction, I double down on what matters, what's truly relevant and ignore what emotionally influences the majority. The biggest takeaway from all this, 99% will get wrecked this cycle because they've yet to learn any form of emotional regulation during their crypto journey. And again, I guess this is probably a good time to say you guys can follow me. This is my third bull run. Patreon.com slash Working Money Channel. I only charge $5 a month. I do think it is a pretty good bang for your buck for what you are getting. My crypto cash out plan will be coming soon. I am looking at a different strategy this time around. I want to keep it very, very simple. I don't want to get into the weeds. Basically, though, we still have a ways to go before the top, and that is uh, my ultimate goal. I guess I should say for the Patreon subscribers, the ultimate goal is trying to pinpoint that top. That's where I'm putting the bulk of my energy because I bought low. Now I'm looking to sell high, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.